Well, good morning, saints. My name is Jaleesa Granger, and I would like to welcome you to MC TV. On behalf of our senior pastor, Bishop W. O'Shea Granger, I would like to thank each and every one of you for inviting us into your homes this morning for our worship service. Before we get into the word, I pray that this message blesses you all in a special, special way. So on behalf of our church family to yours, we'd like to welcome you to Mount Calvary. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord is my light, he is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Lord,
have some people who are confident in that today, that you'll see his goodness. Come on, show me goodness and mercy. So follow me all the days of my life. Hallelujah. You'll see his goodness. Well, good morning, my beloved brothers and sisters. We are so grateful that you've tuned in to MCTV, the virtual worship celebration of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church of West Palm Beach. I'm your host, the senior pastor, Bishop W.O.J. Granger, and I just thank God for you. I'm so grateful because all throughout this pandemic, the Lord has afforded us this medium, this option to bring to you the word of God, and you have trusted us to come into your homes and to share with you this amazing, amazing opportunity to present the word of God. And because we have it, I thank God for it, and we take this stewardship trust so seriously. And I wanna just not only welcome you, but I just wanna invite you to recognize that what you're experiencing is an, is an investment into your own life, your development, your stability, your maturity, and your growth in Jesus Christ. So every chance you get, every occasion, every opportunity, join us, tune in. We are so grateful for our partnership in this work. And I believe that that gives us a great opportunity now uh, to seed into this amazing work, to show our stewardship, our support financially. I wanna encourage you, if you're part of this ministry, this is that time set aside for us to release the tithe. Let's give God that which he requires of us. And I want to encourage everyone to release over and above the tithe and offering. And then our partners near and far, you are invited to sow a significant seed into this fantastic ministry. I'm excited because God has allowed us to continue to touch lives, to transform hearts. God has allowed us to be able to embrace, to edify, to keep engaged, and to evangelize. And it's all because in large measure, you've been so faithful. And so I wanna first thank you, and I want to encourage you not to grow weary in your well-doing, because in due season you, sh you shall reap if you do not faint. So let's prepare our hearts to give, let us pray. Father, for the privilege of sowing good seed into good soil, we pause to give you thanks. Bless us now, O oh God. Bless every giver. Bless every gift. According to the marvelous, matchless, the wonderful and adorable name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Let's give in the house of the Lord. Well, let's prepare our hearts now to go into the Word of God. Once again, I'd like to invite your attention to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And we'll read verses 7 through 9. Verses 7 through 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Herein reads the Word of God. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing, I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. 
Blessed be the reading and the hearing of the word of God, that we may be, may be strengthened, uplifted, and edified thereby. Let us pray. Lord, for this preaching privilege, I give you praise, I give you glory, I give you honor. And Father, once again, I ask for a touch for this task, that your hand of power will be upon this, your servant, that you would stand in my body, that you would think with my mind, and that you would speak with my tongue. Lord, I know you. You've already heard me ask you these things about this word before. But God, I just, just wanted to ask you once again. I pray, Lord, that you would be the celestial matchmaker. Match this word to the need in the heart of some man, some woman, some boy, some girl that is standing in the need of hearing your voice, that need you to speak into the context of their life. Lord, if there's any person that is discouraged, encourage them. Any that are weak, strengthen them. If there are any, oh God, that are overtaken by selfishness, egotism, egotism and even pride, Lord, release a rhema word now and bring them into proper perspective. Bless us, give us benefit from this, your holy and righteous word. In Jesus' name, amen <clears throat> and amen. Beloved, this morning I want to share with you a message uh, which is the second part of this installment entitled The Grace Factors. The Grace Factors. I solicit your prayers, please. I am laboring with this particular theme and this passage of scripture because of the valuable lesson that God wants us to extract from his word. And he permits the Apostle Paul in his penmanship to this epistle to the Corinthians to share with us lessons that teach us about our tendencies, our susceptibilities, and our vulnerabilities to teach us some things about even the permissive will of God, to teach us how God can even employ and incorporate satanic visitations into his process of molding and making us to become all that God would have us to be. This, this passage in a broader sense teaches us a lesson that ordinary people like you and I, people that are doing the very best that we can to navigate our way through the waters of this life, it teaches us about the value and the viability of God's grace in every facet of our lives. As I mentioned on last week, there are these four truths that were embedded and embodied within, within these verses between verse seven through nine. I talked to us about the extensive revelation that God releases unto us. Shared with you about how God gifts us with adversity in order to boost our humility. We unearthed for you and unfolded that God's will often breeds provocation 
of our petitions. It forces us, causes us, provokes us to pray. And then we also laid out an argument in case that God designs a remedy for our inner agony once Satan has been permitted to launch his offensive in the neighborhood of our hearts and minds. But having designed a remedy for our inner agony, this text continues by helping us to understand that God positions us positions people like you, people like me, to have a healthy perspective, healthy perspective about our own flaws, healthy perspective about our own faults, our own failures, and even our own fragilities. This text teaches us an abundance of lessons. In particular, there is a laser-like focus. If you really study what's embodied in the passage, there's a laser-like focus that will help you to walk away from this text with the realization that God is sharing with us about his covering over us, about his compassion for us, and then about his care that he has for us. <clears throat> this text, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 9, it, it, it reveals some very intriguing things for us. It reveals how the Apostle Paul, who is the presumed and reputed author of this particular epistle, how he altered his own perspective. But it also, in a, in a much larger sense, in a very practical sense, teaches people like us trying to make the best that we can in and out of our Christian walk. It, it teaches us how we, out of necessity, can also alter our perspective in this life. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, when you read this text, something becomes crystal clear. That the writer, the author, of this epistle, he, he changed, he, he expresses what I classify or consider to be, he expresses a modification of his communication. When you read the progression of the text, he changed from being a petitioner to becoming a praiser. He changed from merely asking God about his situation and relief to accepting from God his situation as a part of the process of his maturity. He changed from feeling that can be summarized as feeling perplexed unto seeing that he has ultimately discovered his purpose. He changed from a petitioner to a praiser. Notice, if you will, how Paul's communication shifts. He shifts from simply talking to God unto beginning to brag 
on God. He shifts. In fact, a close uh, scrutiny and perusal of the passage can lead us to some amazing conclusions. The adversity that once provoked him to pray now propels him to praise. This, brothers and sisters, fresh insight, this, uh, this depiction and, and chronicle of, 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 of his experience of God's grace that has sustained him, allows him to do something that I found to be so important, something that are found to be so essential. It causes him, brothers and sisters, to stop complaining about uh, that uh, devilish thorn and to start contending with it. I want to parenthetically inject right here that there are some of you that are listening, watching, sharing in this worship experience that if you had to describe your own situation, your own status, your own condition, you, you would recognize that, that there may be a thorn in your own flesh, some messenger of Satan to buffet you, to throw you out of balance, some tide of adversity that seems to come up in your life and blow against you that every time you take a step forward it seems to knock you back but the word comes and I want you to understand that if you really tap into the frequency of God's revelation about this text it'll take you to the place where you'll stop complaining about your thorn and start contending with it to be clear he chooses to give God praise, to give God recognition. He chooses and exercises his personal prerogative to, to, to give God glory in the midst of what I classify as his thorn-infested situation. He is not boasting or he's not glad or, or about the thorn. But he is boasting and glad for God's power, which is clearly greater than his thorn. Let me tell you, God's power is greater than any thorn in your life. Brothers and sisters, this, it, it's a lesson that we need to learn about the power of God against and amidst the weakness of man. I discovered that the grace factor allows us to shift, shift our focus from the severity of our problem to the supremacy of Christ's power, the grace factor. You got to understand, beloved, that it is the presence of God's grace in the middle of our weakness that it de-escalates the stress that is placed upon our flesh and it redirects it to God's powerful, present, and protective hands. You got to understand the grace factor. When I looked carefully and examined thoroughly, when I dug into this text, it showed me that Paul matured to the place and point where he came to realize and become aware that, that there was a need for a trade-off. He's grown to appreciate that that, that if we provide the praise, that God will provide the power. We provide the praise, God 
will provide the power. We provide the praise. Hallelujah. And God will provide the power. He changed from being a mere petitioner to becoming a praiser. But he changed from simply asking God to intervene, to invade his situation and his circumstances. He, he, he stopped simply invoking God and he simply began to accept what God has done. In, in, in fact, what I discovered is this, and I want you to be able to make the application to your own life. What, what were the indications of the change? His attitude seems to have changed. His objective seems to have changed. His, his request, his, his strategy has it's it's all modified it's all shifted it's all adjusted it's all changed rather brothers and sisters then asking god like he did already god just make it go away you remember how we unfolded and unpacked that for you on last week he he, 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 he consulted God thrice that it would depart. Lord, please make it, make it go away. But now, now notice the change. He's not asking God to make it go away. He's experienced what I call, and you've heard people use the phrase, an attitude adjustment. He adjusted his thoughts from that which he felt like he, and, and you've been this, at this place, he, he, he adjusted his thoughts from, from what he, that which he thought that he just couldn't seem to live with. You had things in your life, things that have happened, things that have come up, things that have crept in, and, and, and when they came in, you felt like you couldn't live with it, and you asked God to make it go, make it go away. But he shifted. He's changed. He's adjusted. He, he, he's, he's, he's moved now to, to, to another, another place. And it's, it, he no longer feels like he couldn't live with it. But he now knows what he has to live for. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, in your Christian walk, there's going to come a time where you've got to have an aha moment. You've got to receive the revelation from God. Let the spirit of the living God speak to your heart, speak to your mind, speak into your spirit and cause you to mature beyond the place where there's certain things that you just can't live with to the place where you understand there's something that I've just got to live for. This thorn, he now recognizes, has, has, has not been allowed to destroy him. But, but he understands now with this awakening that the thorn is being used to develop him. Brothers and sisters, look, he has matured. He, he's growing up. He, he's gotten to the place as a direct result of, of what God has said about his situation. Don't you remember how I, I, I brought out the, the, the clause where the Bible says, and he said unto me, let me tell you, when God speaks to you about your situation, about your circumstance, it will cause you to grow up. He grows. And, and here's, what he, here's what happens. He, he can embrace now the reality of 
his weakness and, 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 and his problem. He can, he can embrace it now, but, but, but only alongside of the, the realization that, that, that what he has been given uh, alongside of his weakness is so much greater. What he's been given alongside of his, his problems and his, 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 his predicament, his plight, and his pain, it's, it's not only so much greater, it's stronger, it's better, it's, it's, it's wiser. It's the grace factor. The shift in his attitude, brothers and sisters, enable us to draw a conclusion. Here it is. That, that, he's, that he's not only heard uh, God's declaration uh, about the sufficiency of his grace, but, but his life now has become living proof of the demonstration of that grace. And I tell you, when you mature, when you grow, when you get wiser in the Lord, when you begin to weave the, the word and revelation into the fabric of your lifestyle, you too will become one who gets to the place where you are beyond the simple uh, 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 recitation of God's declaration about the sufficiency of his grace, and you'll become a living proof or a living testimony in demonstration of of that grace. The text is about the times within life, your life, times in life, my life, that we eventually realize after, after undergoing or after facing some kind of hellish or a horrifying or hurtful situation that, that, it, that it took going through that for this season to help us to realize and help us to recognize the simultaneous season of God's amazing grace. He had to go through that in order to get to this. In other words, God's grace, the grace factor present and operative within your life, it it, it, it doesn't cause us to bypass the thorn or the thorny situations that we got to handle sometimes within our lives. The, the, the grace of God, it, 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 it doesn't cause us to sidestep the thorns, it doesn't cause us to, to, to simply uh, run away from the thorns and try to find a way to, 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 to extricate ourselves out, out of whatever it causes, breeds, and produces in and around our lives, but rather what the grace factor does is it enables us, it empowers us, and it envelops us while we deal with the thorn. You got to uh, throw up your hand and say, deal with it. Here's what I learned. I learned that sometimes in life, brothers and sisters, that the heavier the thorn, the mightier the grace. That I learned that sometimes the longer the, the, the thorn sings, to have been allowed to last within your life, the Father, the grace of God extends. I, I learn, I learn, I learn that the wider the scope of the thorn is around your life, that the more expansive the grace of God is upon your life. I learn, brothers and sisters, that the darker the thorn is in your life, that the brighter his grace is in your life. When a thorn has great potency, great has, grace has greater capacity. God will increase your capacity 
based upon uh, the, 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 the potential of the potency of the thorns within your life. More thorns, more grace. I like that about God, about just about finished. Third thing that he changed is it changed from feeling perplexed to finally seeing purpose. If you want to mature, if you want to develop, if you want to get to that place where God ordains and wills and intends for you to be, maybe you ought to consider the possibility that what might need to happen in your life is you might need to take a page out of this experience of Paul and get to the place where you change from feeling perplexed about the presence of a thorn to seeing the power of his purpose in your life. He's grown through his predicament. What, what at one point felt to him, I'm no doubt within my mind, like it, and even the text reveals it like it was a burden, has now ended up being for him one of life's greatest blessings. I tell you, when you mature, when you understand, when you get comprehension of the presence and the operative factor of God's grace within your life, what once was your burden will begin to transform it right before your natural eyes to become your blessing. So he, as well as we, understand that the reason the thing, the thorn had to come is because God meant it for our good. Brothers and sisters, the flaws that you have, the faults, the, fr the fragilities and the failures can all now be worn in your life. You ain't got to be ashamed. You don't have to be guilt stricken. You don't have to wear it like it's a yoke. You don't have to handle it as if it's bondage or a burden. But now, because of the revelation that God has released and, 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 and packaged for you and dispatched and dispersed and disseminated and made accessible unto you, you can now recognize that all the stuff that's wrong about you and wrong inside of you can be worn now as your badge of honor. Oh yeah, oh yeah, mistakes. Your goofs, your failures, your hang-ups, you can wear them now. They, they can now become your, your badge of honor. Not so that you'll be boosted up in pride. That's not the reason. Not to boost your pride, but, but to elevate your praise. As a close, brothers and sisters, listen. When you read this text, it makes it plain. It makes it plain that we once thought that the thorn or something else, we thought that we had something in our lives to hold us back. We thought. We thought that we had Something that had occurred, that had come in, something that had been released, something that had been given unto us that was to keep us down. We thought, we thought that there was something, maybe something that the devil brought, maybe something that some ill-willed person, some evil thinking person has brought into our lives and maybe we thought 
that it was something that God even allowed to come into our lives to batter us repeatedly. We fought. We thought, brothers and sisters, that there might have been something that came into our lives. We thought it came to knock us off of our prescribed and best course. We fought. We thought, we presumed, we suspected that there was something to afflict us that had been brought into our lives and afflict us not just for a, a, a small period of time, but for long, extended, protracted periods of time. But now, let me tell you, now, brothers and sisters, hear and heed the revelation because what I've come to understand is that is that is that is that the scripture elevates our suspicions of what we fought to a level and layer of unquestionable truth. It's not a matter that we fought so and so came and happened in our lives in order to cause certain things to happen to push us down to our knees. No, brothers and sisters, it's not a suspicion. It's not a hypothesis. It's not a just some kind of an educated guest, but rather it is a reality that God himself brothers and sisters has allowed certain kinds of adversity to come creep up within your life and creep up within my life and let me tell you now I checked the record and I checked the writ and here's my conclusion that it's verified it's certified and 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 you better understand that the notion that there is something wrong with us let me tell you this it's substantiated because there is something wrong with us the idea that there's something that is problematic on the inside of us it's authenticated and brothers and sisters let me tell you you don't have to guess anymore you don't have to wonder anymore it's been validated substantiated and authenticated that we have a problem but brothers and my sisters let me tell you this and this is the part that really blesses me so much. It is that the text says that now, once I've come to this realization, now I may as well bust out in my praise. Now I can glorify his holy and righteous name. Now I can boast in and on my God. Now I can spend my time bragging about the God. God of my salvation and let me tell you there's a traceable trail as to why I arrive at this conclusion it is because of my weakness because of my weakness I now have my access well my brothers and sisters as I close the question has to be raised well what is the access that you now have been granted and I came to tell you this morning that this lets us all know that when we are weak, that God's amazing grace, hallelujah, that it makes us strong. And somebody parenthetically might be raising the question. You might be saying, well, preacher, tell me how does God do this I gotta close by telling you that the Bible says in the ninth verse that last little small clause it says with the reminder that it is by the power of Christ and brothers and sisters as I close I gotta tell you that there's at least three ways that we gain the benefit of God's power the power of Christ according to the understanding and the interpretation of the word of God. First of all, the Bible says that the power of Christ, it may reside within me. And I tell you, you want that.
that power <laughs> to reside within you because when the power of Christ <laughs> resides within you it brings about your stability <laughs> stability from the blowing of the winds <laughs> Stability from the beating of adversity. Stability in the midst of and in the middle of the times and situations that seem to come and knock us down. But I got to close by telling you that not only that the power of Christ shall reside within me for stability, but that the power of Christ another translation says may rest on me it rests on me for ability ability to do the work of God ability to do the will of God I need that ability the ability to worship the name of God I want that power I want that power to reside in me uh, so I can have stability I want that power to rest on me so I'll have that ability but last of all I want that power the power of God that power of Christ the power of the grace of God to be revealed through me I want that power to be revealed through me for credibility because I want the world to know that I am positioned for God to get the glory he did not give me grace to make a name for myself he did not give me grace for me to have my name in bright lights. He didn't give me grace so that you could see me shining bright, but he gave me grace so that he could get the glory. He gave me grace so that I can go down and raise him up. He gave me grace so that I can be hidden and God can be revealed. Do I have any witnesses here? So I made up within my mind that because I have it, his sufficient grace, I'm gonna hide myself and let the Lord be revealed. I'm gonna lower myself and let God be hanged. Do I have anybody? Is there anybody here that's made up your mind? As for me and my house, oh, I'm finished now. I'll no longer rob God of the glory that belongs to him. I'll no longer let my mind cause me to steal from him the glory that he deserves. Have I got a witness here that I made up within my mind? I'm not taking credit for what my God can do. I will not try to commit myself to put forth myself, my selfish agenda, my selfish ambition, my selfish aims, but I made up in my mind that every chance I get, I'll preach for his glory. Every chance I get, I'll serve for his glory. Every chance I get, I'll sacrifice for his glory. Make up your mind that for God be the glory. Make up your mind that because of his grace, that's God's riches at Christ's expense. I made up within my mind. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him out of the abundance of my weakness. I'm going to praise him with all of my faults with all of my flaws with all of my failures 
to God be the glory. Because I came to realize that if God can, if God can save you, then the same God that can save your life, he can use your life. There's still time for you. There's still a chance for you. Make up your mind. Say, for God I'll live. And for God I'll die. Surely the grace of God. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. But it's also adequate. And lastly, it's abundant. In and for your life. Listen. God synchronized my thoughts, my mind to your pain, your plight, your predicament. You might have been feeling overwhelmed by whatever it is that has come into your life. You might have been feeling like it was too much. It was too heavy, too big, too massive, too severe, too crucial. And let me tell you something, it is. It, it always has been. So here's my suggestion to you. Rather, here's my decree to you. Stop trusting self. Stop trusting your ability, your talent, your training, your stuff, your money, your hookups, your connections. Stop it. Transfer your trust to the sufficiency, the supremacy of the grace of Almighty God. I want to pray for you. I want to pray that God will take that stress off of your flesh, but more so that you will take the stress off of your flesh. Father, I release now, I release an apostolic blessing upon my brother, my sister. That you take it off. Oh God, that you take the burden that has mounted up in their heart. Relieve them of it now by helping them to sense, to discern, to discover the operation and the function of the power of your grace in their life. Bless them now, I pray. God, I ask that you would redirect their thought process change and alter their perspective, raise it from your fleshly humanity to divine supremacy. Do it now, I ask. And I decree that it is done in Jesus' name for you. Things are becoming more manageable for you. You're not going to be overcome, but you're going to be an overcomer. All the things that you've been struggling with that have been pressing on you and impacting you and beating you up and beating you down. God's saying to you, I meant it for your good. I couldn't afford to let you get the big head. I couldn't afford to let you be selfish and self-centered. I needed, I needed it to be more than you are in and of yourself. But you just transfer your, transfer your trust to the power of Christ and life for you will never be the same. That's my prayer, my decree into your life. Now listen, if you're here and you've never opened your heart to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, I extend an invitation to you now to receive Jesus into your heart as your Lord and as your Savior because that same sustaining grace that is able to keep the life of the convert able to keep the life of one that's already saved, it can save one that is still lost. He can save you. So right now, all I encourage you to do, open your heart, profess and confess sin, and pray and ask the Lord to come into your heart and to save you. He will do it, and he'll do it now. That's my prayer for you. That's my prayer for you. Thank you so very much. Thank you for allowing 
me to come into your home. Thank you for walking out this worship experience with us. What a blessing. And as we come to the close of this worship, I want to just encourage you. Several announcements will follow. Please heed them. Remain in contact with this worship until you've seen, because there's some very important announcements that'll be on the screens. But I want to just thank you once again for this journey. And I look forward to praying with you. Please join us at our morning prayer on tomorrow at 7 a.m. And in the meantime, my prayer for you, my wish for you, my desire for you is that you will be better on purpose. God bless you.